No, you're not going to be actually on video, so don't worry. All right. So, in investigations one and two, we dealt with all linear stuff, right? Straight lines, constant rate of change, right? So, in this investigation, we're going to deal with triangles with a fixed, or rectangles with a fixed area. So, it says when a product of two variables is some fixed number. When you see the word product, okay, that means answer is in multiplication, right? The answer what you get when you multiply two numbers together, okay? So, 3 times 4, the product is 12. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's what the word product means. So we want to try to figure out what the pattern is with all that. Because I'm going to kind of give you a little spoiler here. Our, our, we are not dealing with linear patterns from here on out. Okay? Uh, we're going to deal with something else. So again, when it's a fixed number, so again, if we took 12 as a product, right? We know that 1 times 12 is 12, 3 times 4 is 12, and even 2 times 6 is 12, right? We can have three different sets of numbers that when you multiply them together, it gives you 12. The 12 doesn't change. The 12 stays constant, meaning no matter what set of these numbers we multiply, it's always 12, right? So if we go down here to our first little scenario, we have a rectangle, right? Trying to figure out the area. Well, well we're given the area. So who remembers the area of a rectangle, or say it's the same actually for a square too, formula? You guys would have did this last year. With all your shapes. Omar. Yeah, area is length times the width, right? When you multiply the length and the width together, you get the area, right? So if our rectangle is 24 square inches, that's the area. Okay? And they give us these lengths, we have to figure out what the width would be. So if the, if the length was 1 and the area is 24, what would the width be? 24, right? Because 24 divided by 1 is 24, or 1 times 24, you know, is 24, right? What about the 2? 12. 12, right? Because remember, no matter what, the area has to stay 24, right? So if the width is 2, 2 times what gives you 24? 12. What about 3? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Is this how it's going to go today? Because you're, you're, you're fixed and you get kicked out early. You're going to break your own record. I just fell out. Yeah, you just fell out. I, 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 how you fall off a chair? I was walking. I've been alive for like, almost 50 years and I've never fallen off a chair. <laughs> you were walking? <laughs> you supposed to be doing that? Probably not. Probably not? Yeah. Hey, how about probably go to the hallway? <laughs> so 3 times 8 is 24. Take your stuff with you. What about four? Six. Six. Now, when we get to five, does five go evenly to 24? Nope. So let's, uh, take 24 and divide it by five. And if we go to the nearest 10, 4.8. So what if it's six? Length is six, the width would be four, right? Because six times four? Seven. 3.4, and then 8. All right, so we got all our values. Now let's graph it. Watch what happens when we graph. So if I go down here, and we go 1 through 10 for the length. And I think if I can fit them all, if I go by 3, I should be able to fit them all here. All right, so at 1, we were at 24, right? And at 2, we were at 12. And 3, we were at 8. Well, halfway between 6 and 9 is 7.5. So just above halfway, that would be close enough. 4 is 6. All right, now 4.8. So we're just above half. What are you noticing about this line right now? Is it straight? Yeah, it's got a curve to it, right? It is not straight at all. got an arc, so to speak, to it. So again, if it has an arc, that means for sure it's nonlinear, right? And again, what do you notice about the table? If you take a look at the values of the table really quick, what do you notice what's happening in the table? What's happening there in the table? It's what? Someone just said it. Decreasing. 
it's decreasing, right? So as one variable is increasing, that's your length, your width is decreasing. Now, take what you remember about linear, right? Linear in a table, how can you tell if something's linear in a table? I tried to find my notes from last hour. How can you tell if something is linear in a table? What would it have in that table? A constant rate of change, right? Now, does this have a constant rate of change even though it's decreasing? Because linear can decrease. Does that have a constant rate of change? No. No, it doesn't. Okay? So if you look, just in the table alone, that's going down 12, and then 4, and then 2. Not one of them is the same. This is 1.2, 0.8, 0.6, 0.7, 0.9, 4. So not once does it share the same value. Okay? It's never going down by that same amount. So down here, we're asked to describe the pattern of change, all right? So as the length increases, what happens to the width? The width decreases. And what can we add to tell everybody that this is not linear? What can we add to that? Tell everybody that if they were reading that sentence, it would be not, wouldn't be linear. What can we add to that? Right, right. At a non-constant rate of change. Before we were saying at a constant rate of change, right? Because everything was linear. Well, now this is not linear. So we say at a non-constant rate of change. That tells everybody it's not a straight line. In this case, it's curved. Okay? So if we were to write an equation for it, what could we come up with? You lose length and width, and that area was 24 inches. How did we get to the area up here with length and width? What had to happen? What did we have to do to length and width for us to get in the area of 24? We had to multiply it, right? So down here you could say, Length times the width equals 24, right? Because length times width equals 24 every time, no matter what. No matter what, right? Now, if we, we were given the length, right? How do we figure out the width we were given the length? and did not multiply. What can we do? What do we do up here to try to figure out if we were given the like four, what do we do to figure out to get six? Well, we could have divided, right? We could have took that area and divided it by the length to get the width, right? So we could write that down here as this. To get the width, we took 24 and divided it by the length. And we could actually vice versa do it the other way too. If we were given the, the width, we could divide that by 24 and get, do the length as well. Okay? All three of these equations are basically the same. I could get this equation by taking this and doing a little algebra. Watch this. If I divide both sides by L, what happens when I take L divided by L? Anything divided by itself? Right. Isn't that what that is? So that's why these are all the same. Okay, so all three of those we could use any one of the three. Do you have to write all three every time? Nope. One of the three would be just fine. You do not have to write all three every time. Just understand that there can be three. Okay. All right. Now what happens if I decide to take the rectangle and make it 32 inches squared instead of 24? So it's a little bit bigger rectangle, right? Because it's got a bigger area, it's a little bit bigger. So what does that do to our equation now? Before, when the rectangle was 24 inches, right, it was length times width equals 24. What happens when we make it 32? Length times width equals 32. Very good. It just changes the area, right? 
So we can write the same formula, the equations we did on the other page, just change the 24 to a 32. Because now our constant is going to be different. Now we've got to figure out when we multiply certain things, is it's got to equal 32 now, not 24. So if I go to this table, 1 divided by 32 is what? Why don't we divide 32 by 1? 32. What about we go to 2? What about 3? It doesn't go in evenly, does it? Thirty-two divided by three is ten point six repeating. We'll just go to the nearest decimal and make it even ourselves. What about four? Eight, right? That's even. Five. Six point four. What is around the nearest tenth will make it easy? What about 32 divided by 8? Or 32 divided by 9, say it's 3.6. And 32 divided by 10, we should all know that one, right? 3.2, right? We just move the decimal. And 32, move the decimal one over. All right, so we got, got a lot more decimals here. So if we make this one, we'll see if this graph is similar to the first one. So let's go 0 to 10 again. And it get 32, and let's go by fours this time. We'll get everybody in nice and easy there. So 132, 2, 16, 10.6, a little more than half, 8. So you can see it's kind of taking the same shape, right? Just a little more than half. Less than half. So still a nonlinear model, right? So we do a little comparing here, because that's what they want us to do down below. What are the similarities and differences in the equation? Well, the similarities were, they're pretty much the same format, right? Some number times length times the width equals some fixed number, right? Or width divide, uh, equals 32 divided by the length, or, right? So the equations were almost the same in terms of format, right? So similar, we're just going to say the same format. What's different? The difference was the area, right? They gave us different areas. In that first problem, they gave us an area of 24. In the second problem, they gave us a, an area of 32. So these had different areas. Still kind of the same shape, right? If you put those two graphs together, they're going to look very similar. They're not exactly the same because they have different points, but they're similar, right? What about for the graph? Okay. What do both graphs have in common? Um, yeah, the actual picture, though. Think about the picture. What's the the curve, right? And the curve is doing what? Decreasing. So they both have decreasing curves. And one has to decrease if the other is increasing, because when you have that fixed number, as one's increasing, the other has got to decrease to keep that number the same. Or you're never going to have the same. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to have a constant then. It's going to be, so you kind of have to adjust. What's different about them? Not much. It's kind of getting bit picky. We got different intervals on the graph, right? We went up by fours instead of by threes. So we went up by different intervals and points. That's about all that's different. In terms of shape, the graphs are the same. And of course, the tables, well, both tables have lengths and widths. That's about all they have in terms of the same, because the points are different, right? So the difference is obviously the point. The points are different because we have different areas. Okay. So again, here's your first model of nonlinear. This is non-constant rate of change. Okay. Again, not a straight line. Anything that's not straight is nonlinear.
Okay. So what does all that mean? Well, it says when the product of two variables is a fixed number, also called a constant. Then uh, again, remember that constant was like 24. Right? Because we knew that 1 times 24 was there, 2 times 12. Uh, 3 times 8, 4 times 6, just some of the even ones, right? But that constant is that number that does not change. We change the lengths and the widths, but the area stays the same. So, when the pattern in the variable, uh, then the pattern in the variables, um, is as x increases, y decreases, and again, the biggest words, at a non-constant rate of change. That's the big buzzwords. Non-constant rate of change. Okay? It's also constant. The pattern in the graph is a decreasing curve. Okay. And something that's important about this curve, it never touches the x or y axis. And here's y. Okay, I'll come back in just a second. So if I go all the way down here, these are some numbers all greater than zero, right? I can't multiply two numbers greater than zero and get zero. It's never going to happen, right? Those numbers will get really, really small, big, long decimals, but it's never going to touch. So this graph is kind of stuck in this quadrant forever. This will go up high, never touch the y-axis. This will come down this way and keep going and approaching the x-axis, but we'll never touch it. Because again, two numbers greater than zero when you multiply them will never give you zero. So they're kind of stuck, like trapped in quadrant one there. Okay. Also, if it's constant, the pattern in the equation, again, you can either have this, we'll just use x and y, but you can have this, or you can have this. Oh, I did that one already. In that k, and why they use the k for constant, I have no idea. But that's the K. So that number, if you see up here, like in these rectangle problems, that was your constant number. Okay? That was your constant number. And if it fits this equation, if it fits all those things, it's called a, and actually the name is actually on the front of your book, inverse variation. Uh, on the bottom right of your book, it says linear and inverse variation. Okay, so that was kind of the whole title of this book. Okay, so that is what we are getting into in the second half of this book. It is now lots of different types of nonlinear models. All right. So that worksheet I gave you is what you can work on for the rest of the hour, which you have 20, almost 20 minutes. Okay, two problems you should be able to easily get them done. All right. Stop. Okay. Okay.